What's up, everybody? This is Lee, otherwise known as Intuition, and you're listening to Kind of Neat. Thank you guys for tuning in. We love you. I'm not going to go on my normal spiel about blah, 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 but fucking subscribe to us on iTunes. Or if you don't like iTunes, subscribe to us on Stitcher. Go rate us on iTunes. If you don't want to, oh well. But you could be friendly and do it, all right? So today, I have a podcast with my buddy. This is the second Kyle in a row. The last one was Kyle Gray. This one is Kyle Guy. Two of my good friends, they both have, they're both named Kyle and their last names both end with G. It's very strange. Uh, I was also dating a girl for a while whose initials were KG. I don't know what my attraction to the initials KG are. It's a strange thing, but Kyle Verbs. This is my podcast with Verbs. We've known each other a long time, Verbs and I, and this podcast was kind of random because someone else just kind of flaked out last minute, so I hit up Verbs because I saw him on Facebook, and I was like, yo, Verbs, you want to do a podcast today? And he's like, yeah, man, I'm going to go to the studio anyway, so I'm going to be there, and I'm like, all right, cool. And then I realized, oh, shit, the camera that I usually borrow is not available today because my friend that I borrow it from is out of town in San Francisco right now, and I went, oh, shit, I don't have a camera today, so... I'm scrambling and I called up database, my man at I am database behind the boards. And I'm like, yo, fuck, I just realized I don't have a camera. I don't know if we're going to be able to do it today. Let me like try to call verbs back. And then I just told Ben to come in regardless and we'll just figure something out. I tried to call back verbs because I had already canceled on him. But then what happened is somebody tweeted me and they're like, yeah, I have a light. And so he's like, you just got to find the battery. So I call a battery shop near my house and I say, yo, I need an NPF 550. And they're like, yeah, we have one. I'm like, cool, how much is it? And they're like, $55. I said, $55? Jesus fucking Christ, for a fucking battery? That's crazy. But I went and bought one, and I told that dude, this guy, his name is Mike Campbell. So shout out to Mike Campbell, at the kid C on Twitter. Shout out to Mike Campbell. Uh, I said, yo, man, I found a battery. I'll tell you what, I'll buy the battery if you drive from North Hollywood to Atwater Village and let me borrow the light. And he's like, yeah, yeah, man, I got you. So I went and bought the battery. Drive to Atwater Village. Fucking get here and No Can is working on some stuff in the studio. And I'm like, yo, have you talked to Verbs? Because I accidentally canceled. But he had told me that he's going to be at the studio anyways. And James is like, nah, I haven't talked to him. But he said he was on his way. He was supposed to be here at 1. We got here at 2.30 and he w- and Verbs wasn't here. So I actually just like went, well, fuck, let's just record a podcast with Avocado while we're waiting. And so that's the one that was out last week. Meanwhile, all, this whole time, Mike Campbell, who let me borrow the fucking light, he's sitting in this hot ass studio, just waiting, listening to us record. And I told him he would only be here for like 10 minutes. And I feel bad because he ended up sitting here for an hour and a half. But then when the podcast was over with Avocado, lo and behold, Verbs had showed up because, you know, Verbs leads a nomadic lifestyle. He's really out here on a bike and he probably fucking pedaled all the way from Culver City out to Outwater Village. For those of you that don't live in L.A., literally the exact opposite sides of the city. So you have to span all the way across Los Angeles to get from one of those places to the other place. Uh, that is why Verbs' calves are the size of my head. He's got Manny Pacquiao-ass calves. The motherfucker be pedaling everywhere. So Verbs... Uh, He and I did an EP together in 2009. We put it out right before Girls Like Me came out. It's called uh, The Buzz EP. And it was a very uh, serendipitous project. It happened kind of on accident. I was giving him a ride home one day. And I was like, yo, I really like this beat that you're playing. Let me get on it. Lo and behold, somebody else asked us to do a song together. Shout out to Aspect One. He's like, I want you and Verbs to do a song on one of my beats. So I was like, all right, cool. We had two done, and then I was like, yo, we've got two. Let's just finish four more, then we got an EP. And lo and behold, that's what happened. And it was a very cool time for me, and I owe a lot to Verbs as far as like advancing my rap style. When I met him and started being around him, I had just gotten my tonsils taken out. So a lot of people always ask me, like, oh, how come... How come your voice sounds so different on stories about nothing as compared to girls like me? And what happened was I used to have big ass tonsils like they used to touch each other in the back of my mouth almost. And so it affected my voice in that like I always sounded like I had a a stuffy nose. Like so when I would talk, it was always kind of like this, like a fucking like a fat kid or something. No offense to fat people. And so after I got him taken out uh, in 2005 because I had health insurance at the time, it was right before I was about to move to LA and I was like, I had health insurance and I said, Hey, let me, let me just get these taken out. Cause fuck it. They're just like, 
you know, tonsils are gross. If you have big tonsils, like, man, they get, like, growths inside of them, and, like, they make your breast stink all the time and shit, and so, fuck it, I got them taken out, and when I got them taken out, my voice became, like, almost a full octave deeper. It was just, like, more resonant, and there's, like, more uh, bass in it, and it just it just sounds better, but at the time, it was a new tool to me. I wasn't used to having a new voice, and I had to, like, kind of learn it or learn how to use it on a microphone because I'd already gotten used to using my old voice on a microphone. And when I, when I first started recording, I used to kind of yell almost when I was recording because it was the only way that my fucking fat guy voice would sound like rappy to me or like tough, you know, it was like to kind of yell. So when I had this new tool, all of a sudden I had to kind of relax on the mic and completely relearn how to use my instrument. And verbs is a big part of that because at the time, now that I had this like different and to me cooler voice, I had to learn to like rap a little different and to me cooler as well. And so Verbs was a rapper that I had seen around and I, I liked his style. I thought he was a really fucking dope rapper. And I'm like, man, uh, recording with this dude, hearing him rap and seeing him write his bars, it really made me step my game up and it made me uh, learn how to play with the beat a little bit more rather than um, just worrying about the rhymes per se like i started around this time when i was writing with him was when i stopped using pen and paper to write my raps i would write them in my head and i would memorize them and what that would do is allow me to like really use the movement of the beat instead of like the theme of what i was going on or instead of like the rhyme scheme like being a slave to the rhyme scheme it was more like yo listen to the ins and outs of the beat and play with it and do what comes natural. And when you listen to Verbs' raps, you can see that he is so formless. He's always kind of doing what feels good to say and what feels right. And that's something that I really picked up from him and learned from him. That's kind of a theme in his life, the formlessness and the free spiritedness. And we get into that a lot on this podcast. He is a very interesting character and he's kind of known in LA for being everywhere at the same time. He's somebody that's um, mobile without having a car and you're bound to see him at three different events a night. Even if those events, if one of them's in fucking Pasadena and one of them is in Santa Monica and one of them is downtown, somehow he's still pedaling there always. He's nomadic and he lives all over the place and he does random shit and it's very interesting. So this is a conversation that I have with Kyle. You can follow him at Verbs is the homie. Homie spelled H-O-M-I-E. He's an interesting dude, and I think it was a good podcast. I got to know him better than I knew him before. I think you guys will find him just as interesting and charming as I do. I owe a lot to Verbs, and so I'm happy to finally sit down and have a podcast with him. And this is our conversation. I'm kind of neat. Yo. What's up, man? Chilling, man. What have you been up to? Man, just, um, I mean, I kind of been on tour in the city. Like, last week, I just did so many things. They just came out of nowhere. It's like Low End Theory. I, I did Bananas before that. I did Low End Theory. Then over the weekend, I, I forgot. Oh, um, yeah, I did a Seek La Via day party at L.A. Breakless. It was just popping. Then I hosted the Tehran and AMR and Blue show at the Roxy show at Paris Space on Monday. North Hollywood last night. It's just been like... It's been going in out of nowhere. I don't even have nothing to push. I've just been going in. Where uh, does this like nomadic lifestyle come from? You're all over LA. Everyone sees you everywhere. Yeah. When did that start? I feel like it's a kind of a newer thing. Yeah, kind of a newer thing. I mean, when I really started really uh, messing with people in like the bike scene, I guess I really started just embracing the kind of like the hippie, like bike punk hipster lifestyle, I guess. you know. What like year was just, that? 2010? Yeah, like 2010, for sure, 2010. Because we did that shit together in like the oh, end eight? of 09. Yeah, yeah. And you were still like, you hadn't embraced the hipster lifestyle that you just claimed to embrace at this point. Yeah, I was just like an underground hip hop guy. Like, um, I wasn't really riding bikes yet. Um, yeah, you know, I don't know. I just started meeting people, meeting people. I mean, I would still go to Pear Space sometimes in the smell. So I knew of like DIY, like world, just from, you know, Devin Gumshoe I used to go with. So. But that was years ago, so. Yeah, what was your first bike? Oh, man, I got paid doing some, like, ghost riding with, like, cashmere. And uh, I got a, yeah, it was a Sub Rosa, BMX Sub Rosa. 
cashmere agency yeah 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 can yeah. you talk about who you ghost wrote for or no i mean it was for some music compilation some like han zimmer thing that was through that dude ted chung mm. and then they gave me 700 dollars for doing seven songs and i was like i'm buying a bike and i went to orange 20 and i bought a bmx sub rosa that was like 300 bucks why'd you go with a bmx the first time because when i was a kid i was riding bikes and i that's the bike i grew up riding I was like real like, nah, fuck it, I'm riding BMX. Like, I'm not going to get no fixie. Fuck, that's just gay. I would see you riding that BMX around. I'm like, that bike's too small for him. <laughs> yeah, but I was getting it you in, were, dude. I, he would be like, yeah, dog, I just fucking rode 20 miles to get to this show, man. I'm like, god damn, like, on I, a fucking BMX? Yeah, like East Los to like fucking West LA. That's I like the pedaling the equivalent to 40 miles on the other kind of <laughs> yeah, bike. Man. Yeah, what kind of bike are you riding now? It's like a Frankenstein bike. It's huh? a IRO. I got it from my ex-girlfriend. And um, it's like a it's a track bike, but it's like a free wheel. But I went through many bikes. You know, I had like a what was that? You had like a road bike or something? Nah, it was it was like an old school like road bike. It was like a Schwinn or it's called a Free Spirit something Free Spirit. Then somebody gave me a fixie that got stolen. Then I had a tax check last year. I bought this like off brand Schwinn frame that was like murdered out, and I had like all black parts and like sea foam grips that got stolen. And then I've been riding this IRO for like a little over a year now. Your lifestyle is fucking interesting, okay. to say the least. Like, I feel like uh, every time I see you, you're on some kind of new adventure, and I don't really understand everything that you get into at this point. Like, <laughs> you're so everywhere. But like, let's go back real early. Like, where are you from? Are you from LA? Yeah, I'm from Culver City, California. Born and bred. Well, since I was nine years old, I was born in Hollywood. Who are you born to? Oh, like my parents. Yeah, what were oh. your parents all about? My mom. Her name is Belinda Jackson. She's a. Uh, she's born in LA. She's a half white, half black lady. My dad, he's like a Creole man from Arkansas. His name's Roland. He's played football. He almost got drafted to the Bengals when he was in his heyday. No shit. And um, yeah, he's like a kids counselor. What did he used to play? He used to play um, outside linebacker. So he's a big dude. He was big and fast. Yeah, way bigger than me. I just got his same frame, but he's like two times like me. What was it like being born in Hollywood? It was cool, man. My first friends were little Armenian kids. Oh, so you were living like kind of over uh, by Western or something? I was on Kingsley and, and um, Sunset. Over there in Sunset Little Armenia. And yeah, there was a strip club on the corner called Tulips. There's a Shakey's that was on the corner. I remember watching the LA riots when I was a kid on the roof when I was a baby. What was that like? That was cool. I didn't know what was going on. I just knew shit was going down and there was fires. You must have been, what, seven? Six. So you didn't have any context of them? Nah, nah, I just knew, like, we couldn't go outside. Were people scared? People were just, we were on the roof just watching. Everybody in the apartment building was watching. We had the, all the, the doors locked. We were about just watching. Just fires going off? Yeah, it was like a war zone. Helicopters I everywhere. just remember one fire down the street. It was from this, um, it was like Sunset in Normandy. There was a 7-Eleven that got totally burned. Wow. And that shit was crazy. And then did you start elementary school in Hollywood and stuff? Um, me and my mom would bus to West LA to Overland Elementary from Hollywood every day. And then she started sending me on the bus by myself when I was like eight years old. What was she doing? Eight, nine. She used to go to Santa Monica College. Um, she used to take word perfect classes when computers were just hot back then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I used to go to her school sometime. I used to take the bus to her school sometime and we used to bus on the Hollywood at night. And, uh, Yeah. I used to roam SMC as a little kid by myself and just play by myself and meet her at the end of her classes. Is that where you think you got your like outgoing tendencies from? Would you just meet strangers? I would just roam by myself. and like I, There was another kid who had a mom who went there. We used to play, but I forgot his name, but I remember him, though. Is your mom a creative lady? Um, I don't know, man. She's like a hoarder. I don't know. She b collects things. And my mom has hoarding tendencies, like, too. I didn't know that. My mom sings. I mean, but like, I mean, she just watches TV all day and like looks at Oprah magazines and stuff. And yeah, it's pretty funny. She steals stuff sometimes. It's really cute. And she gives me things. Like, she steals yeah, stuff? Yeah, all the time, dude. It's, it's funny. <laughs> That's crazy. We have like 18 fucking Dr. Bronner soaps and she won't even let me use them. <laughs> she didn't even buy them. It's just like, you know, like, it's like mad Dr. Bronner. That's, that's the good shit, man. Dude, don't snitch on your mom, dog. <laughs> She don't even know how to use the internet. She ain't never going to hear this. Keep it real. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Was your dad still around when you were a kid? Or oh, nah. Um, they never got married, but I know they had a baby, which was me. And then um, he moved to San Diego and tried to do law school. And um, yeah, it just didn't work out. I think he was just doing girls or stuff or something like Is that. Is he a part of your life now? Um, Yeah, I haven't talked to my father in a minute, man, because I haven't really had a working phone. Last time I seen him, he gave me this iPad. 
And uh, this last time I already talked to him, he'd been trying to contact me. Uh, my phone was like broken. I couldn't see the screen. And every time I call him, he don't answer. And then, I don't know, man. It'll, it'll happen when it happens. I mean, how's your relationship with him? Is it strange? No, nah, it's not strange. It's cool. It's like, you know, I haven't talked to him in a while. So I don't know. He has an iPhone. He, I guess he don't know how to use the internet or something. I'm on the internet everywhere. So. Does he have like a new family and shit? Nah, man. He's had multiple girlfriends through the years, I believe. You so said you don't got no brothers or sisters? Oh, I have a sister that's older than me that he had. Okay. Um, yeah, she's like almost 40, probably like 37. So like a half sister? Yeah, same dad. And my brother, same mom. Yeah. Did your mom ever remarry? Nah, but she's had the same boyfriend since I was five years old. Oh, wow. Yeah, this dude named Larry. Does he live with her too? Nah, he used to. Well, he used to just be over all the time, but uh, nah, he don't live with us. What is your living situation like right now? You're like a nomad, huh? Yeah, but, um, you know, I try to give my mom $100 a month for rent. And, um, you know, but I be, I either hang out at the homie Jerry's house in downtown, sometimes at Church of Fun, and then some, my homie Mikey Wiley's house, and wherever else I can, like, crash. But, you know, my couches are always the couch at the house. I have a room, too, to have a computer and stuff and clothes. I try to go home, like, you know, every three to four days and wash. And, um, yeah. What's the day-to-day -day like right now? I wake up and try to do something productive. I try to, like, work on music with homies or, like, record somewhere. Or, like, today, this was kind of, like, the goal of the day. And, um, yeah, just trying to do stuff. And then I always try to make sure I dedicate, like, two to three hours of social networking on the Internet just to, like, stay, like, getting looks I mean just stay doing shit emailing people yeah trying to get future shows where do you do that out of like a coffee shop or something yeah Fox Hills Mall lately though oh Fox Hills yeah cause I go in there and I spray my favorite colognes on and shit <laughs> and then I go get a coffee at the coffee bean then I people watch and wave at the pretty hood rats walking around oh it, yeah it's fun I love that I just spray my favorite colognes on <laughs> <laughs> put some oils on my neck that's fantastic. I'll be sweating, so you know, if I have oils on, I smell better than your average like bicyclist person. Hell yeah! You just said you got recognized the other day at Fox Hills, right? Yeah, like yeah. What happened? This fool was like, "What are you verbs?" I'm like, "Yeah." And he's like, "Oh man, the Buzzy P." I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, "Oh, Michelle." Like, yeah. And then yeah, I took a picture with him. Was he a Mexican dude? Yeah. I wonder if it was the same kid that recognized me. I was, I was there um, one day walking around with a friend, and uh, I stopped in the GameStop. And I'm like playing some new fucking video game, uh, one of their display games or whatever. And I'm standing there, and I kind of notice out the corner of my eye, there's this kid like standing outside, like jittery, like look, like <laughs> like looking at me weird, but like kind of jittery. And once I was done, he came over like real nervous. He's like, hey, uh, "Excuse me, are, are you tuition?" And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah." And he's like, "Oh my god, dog! Like, oh my god, I love you and verbs. This shit is so hard." And da 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 da. Hey, what if it was the same? And so guy? I'm wondering it if it was the same, same dude. dude. And he and he like uh, he's like, "Can I take a picture with you?" And uh, we took a picture, and like he and like. When he shook my hand, he was like hand was shaking, like he was hella nervous. Damn. It was very tight, dude. Like it was very flattering and that very shit humbling. Is crazy, man. Yeah, I was stoked on that. I think I met your boy Jackson. You know a dude named Jackson, a little white guy. I feel like I probably I know. took a picture with him too. He said he lives near Palm Cycle, near you or something. Oh yeah, yeah. I think I know who you're talking about. He used to live by me um, at the house that we recorded the Buzz EP. There was a whole little group of biker gang kids that lived down there, but they were young. They were like maybe 13 or 14. Well, maybe he told me he lived on on Jackson. Jackson yeah, that's, maybe that's what it was. he probably lived on Jackson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was all yeah. Yeah, remember like when we record? There's always little biker kids there, and then uh, a lot of those kids grew up to be like part of the bike scene now. So oh, dope. Yeah, dope. yeah. Um, when did you start? Rapping? Rapping. I've been one of the rap since I was nine years old. When you were nine years old, what were you like in school? Uh, I was going to Overland, and I was taking the bus home, number three, the Culver City bus. Coming home, listening to West Side Connection and, like, Busta Rhymes. And, um, yeah, I, was the, I would listen to the West Side Connection every day, like, front to back, like, right when I get home, just listen to it. I eventually I knew all the words I thought Ice Cube was the best rapper of all time I was like I want to be like Ice Cube He's still man. pretty close to it Yeah I just Yeah and it's that's top five That's what um, got me into rapping was Ice Cube Yeah Yeah And then um, yeah That was nine Then when I went on the ha Like Palms I was still listening to rap And that's when you moved to Culver City Like when you were nine no, or ten Yeah nine Yeah 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 Cause I was going to the same elementary school you guys been in that same apartment the whole time? Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, mad years. So you're going to Palms Elementary? And no, no, Palms Middle after oh, that. Palms Middle. Yeah. And rapping and stuff or what? Um, Yeah, I was rapping. At 10? No, no, I, I was trying to rap. I was writing little whack raps. Like I wanted, my, my first rap name was K-Master. 
Because my name was Kyle. So. My name was Easy Lee. My first rapper. <laughs> Easy Lee. Easy Lee. <laughs> Tight. But like with an E and a Z, not yeah. not spelled properly. But then not till I got to Hamilton is when I really started rapping. When uh, you were first started rapping, th- tell me if I'm like this is what I used to do. I would take raps that I knew, like I would take um, Snoop Dogg rhymes because I loved Doggy Style. I had the whole thing memorized, but I would switch my name into his name. Oh uh, yeah, I would do shit like that. Like I remember, I would just recite people's raps all the time. Yeah, exactly. Like uh, we used to have to do projects and social studies, and one of mine was about pollution, and we'd have to get up in front of the class and give a presentation. So mine was like, I flipped gin and juice to be about pollution. Like with so much pollution in the air we breathe, it's kind of uh, hard being big L double E. But I <laughs> <laughs> did you do shit like that? Um, I don't remember. I think so. I did stuff like that. Yeah, I definitely um bit Tyler quality lines and like. And freaked him to my own in like a in a history class or something like that. English maybe, something poetry assignments and shit. What were your first raps like? I don't even know, dog. I was a big Eminem fan when I really started rapping. Yeah, I don't even remember. I know they weren't tight though. Definitely not who I am now. Mm-hmm. This has been a steady evolution. Just training in the dojo, you know. Was there a decision behind going to Hamilton because it's like a performing arts school, right? I just wanted to go there because all the homies was going there from Palms. Yeah. And that's like, you know, if you go to Webster, you go there. If you go to Palms, usually you go to Hamilton. And, um, you know, all the little subsidiary um, middle school, a lot of people, I mean, there's like a certain amount of popping high schools around here. So you either went to one of the popping high schools, is that, or go to a private school, you know. So, yeah, I went there knowing a lot of people from Palms. I met CP and Van Clayton. Those are like two pivotal people I met in my career. Because those are dudes who got me to start freestyling. We were known as like the freestylers at Nutrition and Lunch. And my homie Elvis, other dude named Sweet Three. And um, yeah, it was a bunch of us. Yeah, we would just always rap at the Nutrition and Lunch. And uh, yeah, we battled each other. Kind of everybody, It's like just honing the skills, rapping every day. And, yeah. I've always mentioned a lot of people that I end up interviewing uh, that are from LA, they end up going to Hamilton. And it seems like a lot of talented people pump out of there. Who else were you going to school with at the time or notable names that are still kind of active? Did you go to school with Raquel? Uh, yeah, she's a year younger than me. I knew all of her homies and stuff. I didn't really know her till after, till we started doing the spliff days. That's when I started knowing who she was. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I know Kyla Pratt went there. And it's crazy that when I first met Murs, eventually I realized he we used to go there. I heard some of the people on the stairs dudes went there. And um, yeah, I forget. That dude on One on One who played Arnez, he went there. Um, yeah. Oh, Omarion and his little brother went there. A bunch of other random ass. I, I heard Shia LaBeouf went there too. No I think sure. he's younger than me. Were you involved in performing arts while you were there? Oh yeah, I was in electronic music. I was in stage tech. I was in a symphony orchestra. Oh yeah, you play violin, right? A viola. A viola. I have a violin. Do you still play viola? I mean, it just sits in my room, really. But I haven't touched it in years. You never pick it up and toy with it? And it's so out of tune. I like forgot how to tune it. I'm just like, fuck it. It's a cheap viola anyway. When did you start going to the bloat and stuff like that? Actually, um, late year in 11th grade, I went to the blow once with my homie CP, and it was a school night, but we still went, and then that's how I seen it. Then when I the day I graduated was on a Thursday, and my cousin asked me what I want to do, and I was like, I want to go to this place in Lamert that my brother told me about that like rappers go Which to. Which cousin? I was with my cousin, Ashin. But um, my brother had told me there was something that people rap at in Lamert Park, Project Blow, so I thought... That, that existed so I knew it existed because I've heard of it so it was literally the day you graduated from high school is when you started going yeah and the first people who was outside late at night it was I want, it was like Flawless and you know I want to say Dumb was there but I'm really not sure but I know it was Flawless and it was Champ you know that evil Crimson guy mm-hmm. he was there for sure and um, Fools were just freestyling so I, I was like young and I was trying to freestyle with him and this one I didn't even know and that Bobby was there Bobby with the crazy hair, the crazy white dude. And then after that, me and CP, that summer, we were going every Thursday to the Blowed. And just, I was CP's hype man at first. And then, um. Yeah, I guess CP was rapping and, yeah. and you were just on stage yeah, helping just out. Looking like a goon. Yeah, just yeah. up there. You were the entourage. Basically, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, when I first met you, I saw on repeat. A true life, my girlfriend and I are crazy or some shit. What is yeah. it? I'm in a bad relationship. It, it was, it, uh, I have a jealous girlfriend. Oh, yeah, I have a jealous girlfriend. So CP was the star of A True Life, and I saw you on there a bunch because you guys were like best friends, yeah? Yeah, yeah, me, CP, and Nick, and you know, all those dudes. It was around that time. We had already been going to the blow, but then he just had got that. So we, yeah, cause they I, followed us to the blow, actually. Yeah, I know. I saw That's it. Okay, so crazy. after I met you, I met you probably like, I don't know, maybe 05, 06. I, I can't remember. I remember meeting you and just barely knowing you 
you, but then being like watching MTV reruns one day and there's fucking you and CP and I'm going, holy shit. And then it's like, yeah, we're going to this like open mic thing that we always go to. And it was lo and behold, you guys were at LeMert. Yeah. yeah. So funny. What was that like? That was cool, man. I was like, yeah, the homies are doing cool shit. It's dope. Hell yeah. I think I met you at that um, World Rap Championships. WRC is? Yeah, Venice Beach. You were there, right? Yeah, I feel like we knew each other before that. Yeah, maybe somewhere. I would somewhere. see you around the blowed. Because I used to listen to you and No Can song, Fix Her Up for Winter, when I used to go to SMC. Oh, yeah. When I was low-key going to the blowed, and I just learned how who No Can was. I used to go to his MySpace all the time, yeah. listen to all this shit. And um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember you telling me that because I think I met you the first time at the blowed for some event, and we were wearing the same jacket. Huh. And at the time, this girl that I was dating that I ended up moving down to L.A. with, I was visiting her. And I remember I didn't have any like clothes to wear to go out that night because uh, I was living in Santa Barbara still. So I went to an American Apparel and I bought a jacket. That was like, yeah, American Apparel. That was like, that was tight. I know a lot of my friends now from American Apparel. Really? Even like Caleb and all those like oh, Centaur yeah. Art Collective guys. Yeah. Those are all ex American Imperial employees. No shit. Caleb used to not, he, he never worked there. He used to live down the street and I used to go there and smoke with him on his break when he was like a young dude. No shit. Like just from whatever, he's from like some wine county. Like, yeah. And it's crazy to see all of other relationships. We know how they evolve over the years. Absolutely. You know, it's crazy. Yeah, like, shout out to Caleb. Caleb is one of these people who's a connector who I feel like this is probably the third podcast he's gotten brought up on. So shout out to Caleb. Really? Crazy. Yeah, people love Caleb, dude. Caleb's he's like, the homie, he's a really good guy. Prof Calc, dude. Yeah, Prof Calc. Yeah. So you start going to the bloat and you're being CP's hype man. When does it develop into like fucking Verb yes, the monstrous bar spitter? I was already like coming with the bars even when I was CP's hype man, but I, it just wasn't like fine tuned. Um, me and CP... And Val, we started doing that event called The Spliff. I started rapping more, freestyling more. I was rapping at parties. People were knowing me for like, oh, that's that dude who runs with those dudes. They freestyle tight. And um, yeah, then I don't know. I just kept rapping, man. Listening to a lot of people I like, like a lot of Fonte, a lot of Elzai, a lot of old Eminem freestyles. What was the decision cannabis. initially rather than to like pursue your own solo career initially from the jump to like be a CP's hype man? What was the decision behind that? I just didn't have, I was young. I just wasn't smart Is enough. he a year older than you or what? Nah, he's just one great order than me. But I mean, it it wasn't really like I was his like hype man all time. It was just like that was my homie. He raps, I rap. We were like I recorded some of my first songs with him. And um yeah, so it was just Did like he that. have recording stuff? Nah, we would go to this place in the jungles, my homie MIC's house, all up in the hood to rap and shit. Do shit like that. And uh, yeah. I didn't know anything outside of Culver City and Lamert Park. Right. Never been outside, you know, like when I yeah. When I first started venturing out to like Echo Park or downtown or Silver Lake, I was like, oh shit, this is where the white people hang out. Oh shit, <laughs> this is crazy, yo. <laughs> I was like, oh man, what? <laughs> so I think that people don't understand how much forethought you had in being an event promoter. Uh, I think that you and Val and CP, you guys showed a lot of foresight in coming up with the spliff. So where did that idea come from? And then let's talk about some of the people that you had on there that fools might not understand, like how influential the spliff was. Man, it was like Val, Prince Paul, DJ Rob Shot. It was me and CP and Belvy. Not Prince Paul from De La Soul. No, no, Prince. P-R-I-N-T-Z. Z, yeah, Prince Paul. And, um... That was Val and Rob and Prince were already um, going to DJ school at Scratch Academy, West LA. A lot of people go to DJ school there, and they and they were like, "Yeah, Hopper will let us use this shit every first Friday if we just throw our own event." And then like we're like, "All right, word," and we're just gonna book all the homies. So it started off. I was doing photography for this dude named Hope and Scheme and Light, and they had a collective called Fresh to Death. And Light is now known as Cool Roy. Cool Roy, yeah. yeah. I was their photographer for their little clique. I was shooting all film, and I was doing photo shoots with all film with them. What happened to Hope? Yeah, he's still up. He actually hit me up to do a photo shoot for him. He asked me if I still do that. I'm, I'm going to reply to him and try to do a photo shoot for him. I have a camera now, so I'm going to get back into it. Word. And so then like, I was like, oh, I know these Fresh to Death guys. They're popping on MySpace. Like, yo, we should book them. So we started cross-blending those guys because those are kind of like Westchester, Inglewood guys. We're kind of like West L.A. guys like blowed affiliation light slightly guys so then it was like really a bridge of like the hamilton world the westchester world and then like we had homies who went to venice it was a like uni so it was just like a it was really people from all the surrounding high schools probably knew somebody who knew what this it was, was like a west la 
the way that James used to put it for me, because the spliff started cracking right before I moved to LA. Oh, right. And uh, I didn't really understand the socio like dynamics of Los Angeles yet. And the way that James explained it that I thought was pretty poignant was like the spliff crowd is the West Side cool black nerds. Basically. Or people who live in Ladera Heights, the, the friends there too, all that shit. Ladera yeah. Heights, the Black Beverly Hills. Yeah, yeah. So it was like the culmination of so many different, even the Venice like world, like, you know, it was the culmination of a bunch of shit. And it was definitely like some early cool kid shit. It was like some alternative cool kid shit, like not cool kids, the group, but like fools that were like way early on Kanye and shit like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was early on Kanye. I, I had the first mixtape. Yeah. Van Clayton put me on that shit. Yeah. yeah. Man. I feel like early on at the split, Kanye was probably the most influential rapper too big time everybody, everybody wanted to be Kanye West everybody was perform like they all had his body movements posh down posh ass black dudes you know what I mean all like, posh yeah motherfuckers uh, was wearing bow ties and shit like, back you know, then yeah man talk about some of the people that you had perform we had Scheme we had this group called The Lock that was really dope at the time Raquel's band played a bunch of times um, this band called Ars Poltria. Uh we had Dom Kennedy once Pac Div never performed, but they came through. You and I played there, and at the time, Pac Div and you and I were like a big deal in Los Angeles. Yeah, that was they, like that those was are the they two. Were the, they were the hottest the shit groups. Yeah, yeah that they was were like, they were next up in L. A. Yeah, man. Um, who else played there? A bunch of people. Oh, and also there was that thing called the Pit that was before the Spliff. So we used to book acts from the Pit at the Spliff too, and that was like late Lady G rapped there once. Uh, you know, that dude Daylight who run on to be yeah, a dope so battle rapper. The Pit was an early breeding ground for Smack Style battle MCs yeah, in LA. So, like, Coast. Disaster came from That's there. That's where he came up. Daylight came from there. I mean, they were all in a crew together. Yeah, Watt City. And really, on some really throwback, throwback shit, I even mentioned this. Wasn't but it? What did they call themselves? Crack City? Crack City. That's yeah, what I meant yeah, to say. Yeah. But I was going to battles with Chinky Eye Fridays. And that's where I really met Disaster, was at Zen Sushi in Silver Lake for that thing called Bridges. Okay. And Trek Life was hosting. In, and I battled Disaster for the first time then, and I've known him ever since and battled him a bunch of times. Of course, I never won, but I have battled him a bunch of times, and that's just crazy. Didn't YG play the spliff? No, he didn't, but Ty and Corey were the writer group that wrote that song, and they performed that song at the spliff. That song being Tooted and Booted. Tooted and Booted. Yeah, Ty and Corey. Ty and Corey wrote that? Yeah. West, Ty, West Side Ty wrote that? No, 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 oh. no. Ty was his other dude. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But um, Ty and my homie Nick Khan. Remember Nick Khan, that dude? Mm -mm. Oh, well, he, he was Ty's friend, but he knew them. And um, yeah, they actually wrote that song, sold it to YG. Who was Corey? Corey was a dude. He makes beats and stuff. He, okay. They, Ty Dollar Sign, and it was Corey something. But they used to know all these like cool quasi-hood music guys and... Like, isn't the story go like they played Tutored and Booted at the Spliff? Yeah, way and, before. And everybody was kind of like, whatever, it was like a cigarette. Like, I remember Steph saying that it was like a cigarette break when it, when they played. <laughs> remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like two years later, that song blew the fuck up. Shit's crazy. Oh, another person who played the Spliff, honorable mention to 310. He like manages Overdose now and does videos and he shot shit from Dom Kennedy. But CSAN, that he was like a popping guy back then. Man, there was so many people. What dude. happened to the Spliff? Um, man, what happened? Man, it was just, you know, the mega turn up. It was just getting too popping. Like, fools were just doing all sorts of illegal shit in there, smoking and drinking. And then Hopper wanted to start charging us, like, money to do it. Because it was it, always a free was, event. Yeah, then we started charging five. And, but then it was like a fallout between Val and Hopper, which is why it really stopped. Because I remember you guys tried to do it at On the Rocks a couple times, and that wasn't yeah, really it, happening. It was cool. I mean, it happened. Yeah. Oh, low key, when we did it at On the Rocks, we had Cooley High there. The last time we ever did a spliff and Cooley High was like Rhapsody, Charlie Smarts and um, Tab. And those are those dudes who fuck with Knife Wonder and Rhapsody is like a popping girl in the East Coast. But they came out to my event 2010 at the like the last one we ever did. Huh. A little history. Damn, my roots grow deep in this bitch. I'm tripping out. That's bro. what I'm saying. God I, damn. I, don't, I don't think you even realize <laughs> like jam. you're a major spoon that stirs the pot in the scene. And I don't think a lot of people know that. But like when people say Verbs is the homie, Verbs really is the motherfucking homie that like everyone recognizes you. That's crazy, man. I've been and so around. after the spliff, you started Bananas. How long after was that? Oh, Bananas. So like I started Bananas while doing the spliff, but I didn't start Bananas. My girlfriend at the time, she was this like indie black girl named Gumshoe. Her real name is Devin. But she's the one who introduced me to the smell and pair space and all these type of like DIY parties. And um, so I would go to those places with her. And I was like, well, this is some weird shit. I don't even know how to connect to these people. And then um, 
she was like, I want to book something where like you book some rappers and I book some of my friends' bands and da da da. And then so that's how it really started. I mean, Speak was one of the first people to play that. Open Mic was one of the first. We had a band called Big Whoop, So Many Wizards, Mega Like Hipstered Out the I Game. I played with the early bananas. Don't yeah, sleep on your yeah, boy. Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> Come on yeah, now. Yeah. And then, you know, me and her broke. I played the Spliff two times as well. Yeah, I don't oh, know if you remember that. No, yeah, I do remember yeah. that. That's crazy. No, yeah. So. Uh, and then um, me and her broke up. And um, I continued to do bananas, and the spliff ended. So it was like, fuck, I got all these people I know. So I just started booking all the bananas and making my flyers. And um, yeah, I just kept the momentum rolling. And and now uh, you do them, what, every, which Tuesday? Every third Tuesday. Every third Tuesday yeah, yeah. of the month. Yeah. And it's at Where Project Blowed used to take place. Yeah, Chaos Network. Chaos Network. And now, I mean, explain the Bloats people. It was the longest running open mic in LA. In the world at one point, wasn't it? I don't know. It went That's on, what they used it to claim. since 91. Yeah, but now, I mean, is it is it done? Is the bloat done? The bloat name and affiliation is not done. Like, the, the, the bloat is, blow is still a family. It's an entity. It's a family. We do a yearly um, bloat anniversary. Reunion. Yeah. And I, I hosted the last one. Uh-huh. And it was dope because that was mega popping. But the was, actual event, the open mic is no longer running. The open mic is no longer running. I've been honored because I didn't want to say this when I first started doing it because I already felt that Bananas was a continuation of the bloat. But when OGs started telling me like, yo, your bananas event is the continuation of the blow, then I was like real humbled and like word. And I think it's a modernized version because it is a place where people can come to hone their skills, but it's like people across the city aren't just into rap music no more. Like it really shows that the younger generation has a wide variance of tastes and preferences because you can't have this crazy indie rock band or a metal band playing with like super barred out rappers in the same show and everybody has a good time. Yeah, man, because like I mean Especially when I feel like when like NERD started being popular to the young kids and like this alternative kind of sense of blackness started being like repped in like the inner city. I felt like that added to the appeal. So everybody's like, oh, this is like, I mean, one of my like, one of my homegirls is like, that's just a douchey ass black hipster hangout. Like she was like, hated on it. Like, wait. And I was like, whatever, nigga. It's tight. <laughs> like, hey, you came. <laughs> so what does that make you, bitch? Get the fuck out of here. Like, like, you know? Yeah. But um, yeah, that's basically how it happened. I mean, low key, Rob and Belvy just stepped down this last banana. So I don't have a sound system. So. Why did they step down? You know, we've been doing it for so long. There was a time. How long has it been going on now? Six years? Since five years? Like four or five years. Yeah. 2010-ish. And it's something crazy. I mean, to really give you uh, your props, like, Lamert was starting to be someplace where people weren't going that much anymore. It seemed like once the bloat started slowing down, and I think now you've really made, at least once a month there, it's like a very vibrant fucking part of town. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of people that show up there. They went from, I remember going to the first couple bananas and like maybe 30 people would show up. Yeah. And now I've seen as many as like 300 people there or something. Yeah, it'd be ridiculous. I was like, I can't believe we don't get shut down sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> like, this there's, is so The whole illegal. street will just be full of people. Yeah, yeah. And then I helped do the Lamert Park Art Walk too. And that's yeah, kinda, that's another thing that you started, right? Yeah, cause with help, because Ben Caldwell was like, I want you to do your bananas vibe, but at the, you know, Sundays. Tell people who Ben Caldwell is. Ben Caldwell is like the Yoda of all artsy black men in LA. <laughs> he's like the OG. He he used to teach at um, Cal Arts. Uh huh. And um, he's a dude who owns Chaos Network. And before there was the blow, there was this thing called Juju. And then. There was something else that happened there, but he, his space has always been open for people to do creative shit in Lamert Park, and he, he's involved with various programs in USC, and UC, he used to go to UCLA. He was a Vietnam veteran, but he's the real reason why a lot of this like underground rap shit goes down in LA. And so out of everybody that was involved with the Blode from your generation of the Blode, which is like a half generation younger than like No Cans and Kales, yeah. like you guys were the little homies to them kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why out of everybody from that little generation that's like you, Dom, Lyra, Sat, who else? Alpha Boss. Alpha. What do you think Ben saw in you to like kind of bring you into that fold? Man, you know, it was really Devin going up to Ben and asking him. Because Devin used to come to the blow with, like, Marina. You know, the homegirl Marina? Or Milu, the, the suicide oh, girl. Oh, yeah, Mil yeah, Milu suicide. She used to come to the blow as, when she was 16. And she used to ride bikes, too, on some random shit. Because she knows homie George. And, you know. And then, um yeah. And, and my homegirl Aaron. like So then, like, Devin just goes up to Ben and, like, yo, yeah, I want to start throwing my events. And, you know, Ben's all about that. So then, like, boom, that's how that happened. And then so then I was I was already like affiliated with Devin and stuff. So, you know, Ben and Ben already knew me from back in the day because I used to go with Kiana and he knows her and take pictures and all this. 
And yeah, and I don't know. He did, really, he says, I always just show up. He's like, Verbs, you know, out of all these people, you always just show up. Like, he's always like, you show up all the time. And that's what I respect about you because you always show up. So I'm just like, yeah. Just consistency, man. Showing I feel like up any, is like half of winning a lot yeah, of the time. I feel like anybody could have done what I've done right now, but I just, you know, I just did it. It could have been anybody. I just, you know, it just kind of fell in my hand and I kind of just said, fuck it. I ain't got nothing else popping. I'm going to do this. How do you find the motivation to keep doing it after four years? And sometimes I want to give up, honestly. Yeah. I, I want to pass it over to some younger people. But if I realize if I, if I stop, nobody else will do it. And then I'll be the dude who just dropped the ball and never did it. And then that'll look worse. Yeah. I'd rather keep doing it and have it become whack with me keep doing it than me just stop out of nowhere and being like, oh, you should have kept doing it. What the hell? After the spliff kind of fizzled off and then bananas got really cracking, do you ever feel like, oh, maybe it's time to switch it up and try something else? Yeah, man. I, eventually, I want to do like a festival, maybe yeah. a once a year festival in that back parking lot, oh, uh, yeah. a la some paid dues vibe. Yeah. And um, yeah, I want to call it Homie Fest. It's a been it's been an idea in my brain for a minute, but I want to start doing a yearly Homie Fest. That sounds and having it be like you know like paid dues, but in L.A. And yeah. with like you know people who maybe be who might be off of that like pop and rap radar. You right, know? right. Give some shine to some local. The cats. left field. Yeah. Speaking of paid dues, how did you meet Merce? Dude, uh, my homegirl, Stephanie. So, so it was one year, Merce had a free show at the El Rey. We're all in line. It was me, 310. It was Paul. It was Stephanie. It was, uh, I want to say it was her boyfriend at the time, El Rey, who was there too. Anyway, we were all in line. And uh, You were with El Rey at the El Rey? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. That's like random. She used to go with the, my DJ way back in the oh, day. Oh, okay. And, um... Yeah, she met Merz. I think Stephanie knew somebody who knew Merz, and her 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 like AM name was High Five for Jesus. Merz had a line in the song where he said High Five for Jesus. So like he met Stephanie, they became friends. She brought Merz to the spliff because Stephanie just a great connector like that. And then um, she's like, meet my friend Kyle. He raps really cool. I showed him my CD, my handmade CD, and it just kind of blew his mind. He was like, well, shit, this is genius. Like what? Da 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 da. And um, yeah, man, um, I seen him at the do over one day and they didn't let Merz in. He was like, fuck this. I'm not going in. And I was like, yo, you want to work on a track sometime? I was all nervous to ask him like, yo. And he was like, yeah, man, take my number. So like I hit him up on MySpace and then he said he would be down to work on a track like on MySpace. And then he came to my homie's house and we did a song uh, at the homie Starion's house. And then, you know, months go by. I did that track, whatever. And then um, I get evicted. And then he like asked me if I wanted to go on tour, so it all like worked out perfectly. Yeah, I got evicted. That song that you guys did together is still one of my favorites of yours. I used to always make you play it when we do live shows together. And now I'm free. Yeah, now I'm uh, free. That uh, song's great, dude. Yeah. And so you, you and Murs like became really good buddies. Yeah, yeah, man. Um, I, I I used to hit him up for like advice from time to time, and um, yeah, he took me on tour. I really showed me showed me how like the touring rapper life is and like the the logistics of stuff and how much stuff costs like tour bus and all that and the importance of having merch and and then you know really just how to rap better too because my rap sets were hella whack when I was rapping with Merz like but I was a hype man so even being a hype man made me a better performer because just seeing how he would do and then having to like keep up with his energy and um, yeah Merz is a really good performer. Yeah, so that that's a big reason. Speak and Merz and No Can or a big reason my rap sets sound how they sound. Because when I used to watch Speak, he had kind of this DIY punk rock aesthetic about his whole approach to the shit. And then No Can kind of had this voice thing. And then Merz kind of had a little bit of some of the things, but just more so just organization of the set. And that's what I really attribute to me even doing the things I do on stage. And um, that shit is crazy, man. And yeah, man. I toured Merz a couple times, and he put me on one of the earlier paid dues, and that shit was hella fun. The first song that we ever did together um, was... Touch the Moon? Touch the Moon. Yeah, we did that at that paid dues. And it was, we did that right before you went on tour with Merz. I think, if I remember correctly, basically I had just moved to L.A., I would see you everywhere. We started mm -hmm. getting along because, like, whatever. We were always wearing the same clothes and Corvette shit. Cause, City, too. You yeah, you around. hooked me up one time at American Apparel and gave me some, like, hella cheap gear. Oh, tight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Back in the Santa Monica one. Yeah, man. Yeah, and then I just start, I realized that you lived, like, literally three blocks down the street from me. Yeah, so yeah. I ended up always giving you rides home. You'd be playing me new beats. And then one of them, I was like, yo, 
I like this beat. You should let me rap on it. And you're like, all right, cool. And you know who made that beat was Speaks Homie Fud. Yeah, Fud. Dude, I do remember that. I haven't seen him in ages, but I remember that was Speaks Homie. Yeah. So we recorded that. That was the first time I'd ever tried to sing on a song. I just got my tonsils taken out. So huh. I was like trying to rap a little different, but also I was like, oh, verbs fucking bars out. Like I really need to like come with it because you already had your verse recorded. Yeah. I, yeah. I wrote that. Yeah. And I was like, I need to like bar up heavier. And so uh, anyways, we did that. And then we just happened to like, you had a, like a show at that little Tokyo spot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, the grand, jazz, the jazz, jazz to something. It might have been an OFRAP Se- show. Second Street Jazz. I think it was an OFRAP show. Yeah. And so I went with you and we did that song for the first time. And for some reason, I don't know if you felt it, pause, but like we, there was like some kind of magic on stage between yeah, us. Yeah, Agree? Yeah, yeah. yeah, dude. Yeah. Like the crowd ate it the fuck up for some reason. Like it felt really good. And then I was like, oh, you know, well, we should probably just do more of these. Yeah, yeah. And we ended up doing a whole project what together. Was the second Second one. The second was one. Was hypnotize the second one? Nah, that was one of the later ones. I think the, the second one we did. Oh, you know why? Okay, so Aspect One gave us a beat and he's like, yo, I'm making this compilation album and I want you and Verbs to rap on a song. He, not even knowing that we had already done a song together, remember? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that was yeah. What You Make It. Yeah. And so we ended up doing What You Make It and then I was like, yo, we already got two, let's do more. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then we had the dive. The, I forgot how he got the DBIC one. Was that a. Did I you think, have that one? Uh, you had some beats of his, or I had some beats of his. Man, I want more DBIC beats. I know. I, have, <laughs> I haven't talked to DBIC. I wish you could just so give long. me a zip. <laughs> just give me all your beats. Yeah, like, for real. I don't know. I thought it was cool because, like, then uh, we, I think we recorded those two, and then you went on tour, and I didn't see you for a couple months. And then when you got back, I was like, ah, oh, let's just finish. And then we ended up doing a lot of shows together. Yeah, a bunch. The UCR shit. Not, then all we did, I think of... we did, like, a Pomona show with Mers. Did you rap at me at the smell once, too? I think maybe I did a song with you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as far as our big shows go, we opened for Mers, like, three times that were big. Oh, Orange County. The Orange County show is probably one of that my. That was mega crack and lucky I am came on stage freestyle with. Yeah, yeah, we Alpha oh, was there. That's right, Merce. Yeah, Merce, Alpha, and Lucky I am. They all like right oh, with yeah, us. Oh yeah, Merce came and freestyled on the shit too. They yeah. all caught the Holy Ghost because we were killing it so hard. It had to be. Yeah, <laughs> that's probably. Uh, I don't know about you, but that's probably like within my top five shows I've ever played. That yeah, was a that real was, magical moment that for was me. Pretty gnarly. Yeah, yeah. I still have a lot of people that go. That's how I found out about you was because of the Intuition of Earth show Crazy. at uh, the Orange County um, House of Blues. That was the crunk one. Anyways, after that is when you got into the bike shit. Yeah, I got into the. I was already like biking tough and shit. I started um, towards the end of me and um, Gumshoe's relationship. We went to this show at this new venue called Mick World, mm-hmm. and it was in 2010. And the family. It was their first family fest. It was at Mick World. You know Mick World? Yeah, over on Adams. That's where the first family fest was. Yeah, yeah. That was like kind of the, when the, all those kids first started doing, they were younger than me, but they were like kind of like some indie kind of bike hipster guys. They, they started doing their shit. I started fucking with them. Caleb already knew these people. Caleb was like, yo, you should go on the family tour. So I went on the family tour. Because we played a show together at Mick World one time. You and yeah. I did. Yeah, yeah. And that was a family thing, too. And Prof Calc played, too. Yeah, yeah. Like Caleb hooked me up with the family. Yeah, and then, um, yeah, we went on t- I went on tour with Prof Calc and some family dudes, and we went up north. And then I just started, I, I started um, going on the family rides. Family ride was a ride that happened every, like, every first Saturday. And we would go to different places, and there would be bands or rappers or whoever performing at different stops on the ride. And um, so I started fucking with the family. I started realizing there was more to the bike scene than just the family rides. And I started seeing, like, oh, shit, there's this crank mob shit. Oh, shit, there's mom riders. Oh, shit, there's the weirdos, the angelopes, who I kind of hang out with now. They got their own thing, and all that shit crosses together. And then all those people do music, so then that... And then, yeah, so I've been, I've been doing a lot of bike riding, a lot of, like, being roughly associated with collectives and hanging out. I mean, you started hanging out with this kind of new crowd. And yeah. And that's when you started getting more nomadic, right? Yeah, man. It's just, um, you know, adopting kind of, like, the, like, I guess, you know, I don't want to sound douchey, but kind of, like, punk rock ethos of life. Just kind of, like, just kind of partying slash doing shit and, um, you know, just living and just, like, you know, hanging out, going yeah. to the desert with people and riding bikes and and you have a very interesting getup. like uh it's been evolving through the it years. has been evolving been. but it's been a slow evolution so <laughs> people kind of recognize a lot of your uniform at this point yeah, so yeah. tell me first where did the red hat come from the red hat okay when i went on the tour with Merz first i had like a burgundy beanie and i was wearing that a lot then 
I was living in this place called Westside Terrace with my homie, like Adam Stanzak and the homie Tony. And me and uh, Devin was there with me too. And we were watching The Life Aquatic. I had never seen it. But Devin had been telling me, like, you should watch The Life Aquatic and Royal Tenon Bombs. She was kind of like my hipster ambassador that was my girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, and I was like, because I used to have a big thing for weird ass black girls. And she was like the first one that really gave me play like that. So I saw The Life Aquatic and I'm like, oh shit, I'm taking that. I love that. Yeah. I love Bill Murray. I loved Ghostbusters. I started buying red hats, started wearing red hats. Um, I had a homegirl who owned a vintage store. She gave me a bunch of clothes. This vest was in was in that bag, and I started wearing the vest. First, I was just wearing Is that it. the original vest? It's the OG vest, yeah. How'd you get it back? I thought you lost it. No, I lost Yeah, I lost it on a tour with Murs once in Portland, Maine. I was, I was kissing this white girl who was really drunk, and she got too drunk and started throwing up. I, had, I I lost it for like nine months. It was gone for nine months. I was wearing other vests. Wait, so what year did you start wearing the vest? In like 2009. Okay. And it used to have other... I remember when you first started, I was like, man, Verbs is fucking odd one. He is wearing... <laughs> like, I don't know if you guys have seen the vest. You'll see it in the video, but it's like a, a old like Vietnam looking ass fisherman <laughs> vest kind of. It's like a half fisherman, half Yo, photo vest. I just started adopting this thing. I'm, just, I'm stopping. I'm not going to wash it anymore. All right. I just been adopting it. I, gonna, I kind of figured you had never washed nah, it. Nah, I, I used to watch it like every six months. I mean, every, every six like weeks. Yeah. But now I just fully just stop. I just spray it with cologne every day when I go to the mall. The Foxes. Yeah, Foxes Mall. Clinique Cappy. <laughs> or I, I wear Clinique Cappy. I wear this Carol's Daughter oil called Ecstasy, and I also <laughs> I spray Gucci perfume called um, it's called Glamorous Magnolia. <laughs> so I, now, if I you want to smell that. like verbs, you know how you gotta you gotta mix them, and then like you know. <laughs> You know, I, yeah, I mix perfume and cologne and some oils. And wow, <laughs> that's the whole, that's me. And cocoa butter, too, is an under, t- under base. Oh, my God. But, yeah, you know, when you sweat as much as me, you got to make sure you're smelling good, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I could be I sweaty as, as fuck. I still smell better than, than half these people, you know what I mean? <laughs> I feel you. Um, all right, so you, ha- you got the vest. When was the moment that you decided, like, this vest is going to be my uniform? I liked it a lot. And then I started, um, when I first got my first pins, I went to the smell one day for a show, and some band was giving out a pin. I think it was So Many Wizards. My first pin was a So Many Wizards pin. I never even told those guys that. But I used to wear that, and then... Um, I would go places and get more pins and accumulate, and then eventually it was just like I, it just it's covered know, in pins. Yeah, and the vest actually broke once, like it's kind of breaking now on, on the shoulder. I yeah, see yeah. It. I paid sixty bucks to get it repaired once, and then now I'm gonna get it repaired eventually again. And um, yeah, man, I just be collecting pins. And so you went on tour with Merce, and you had the vest, and I remember you coming back and being fucking heartbroken, like, "Yo, Lee, dog, I lost my vest." Yeah, I lost the vest in Portland, Maine. Keep telling that story because you got cut so, off like, halfway through. So I'm in Portland, Maine, and I see this like big titty, little cute, like Topanga looking white girl smiling <laughs> at me and shit. And um, <laughs> you know, we go outside, smoke a cigarette, and like, she's just flirting with me. She's buying me a drink. I'm like, for sure. I'm dancing with her in the middle of the dance floor. I'm getting her number. Merz is like in the middle of one of his songs. It's like stop getting numbers on my show, Verbs. <laughs> like like just calls me out and then like puts um, you on blast. And then he does a song that I wrote for him. He was like, Verbs wrote this song, so you should have sex with him. And he's and then so he he, he does this shit. And then so like Merz is like, you coming back to the hotel? I'm like, nah, I'm gonna try to like you know I'm gonna try to you know it's so one of my last days of tour. I'm trying to live it up. He's like, all right, all right, just get you know just get back safe. So whatever. It was raining in Portland, Maine, the other side of the country. We I get there. We're like kissing and stuff. She's just like, oh, I'm just, I'm just like too drunk. So then she starts throwing up in the toilet. I'm like helping her. I call, I wake up her friend and be like, yo, your friend's throwing up. Like it's like, you know. You hear what a fucking sweetheart like, Verbs is, ladies? He will hold your hair back <laughs> like, you and know, not get inappropriate. He'll wake up your friend to let you know. You know, he's, yeah, she she's was too like, drunk. Please get my friend. I'm like, oh, totally. You know, I'm like, fuck. I'm definitely not fucking tonight. Whatever. <laughs> I really wanted to. The titties were so big. Oh, my God. <laughs> but, like, so I'm tucking her in, right? And I'm like, I'm about to just call a cab. I was balling at the time because I had that tour money of selling CDs. So I was like, I'm about to just call a cab, go home. And I was like, well, can I at least, like, touch and see one of your titties? And she was like, no. And I was like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> so that, that's how that went. Can I and at then, least um, touch one of your titties? So I get in the car, and I realize I'm in the taxi cab, and it's raining. And I'm like, Fuck. Like, I had left this shit, and I'm like... At her crib. Yeah, so I hit her up on Facebook and asked her to send it to me, and it took her nine months to do it. But you got it back. Yeah, yeah, she sent me a... She wrote a little dope note in it, you know what I'm saying? Ha, did Says she ever she, send you the titties via text message? No. 
Damn, dog. But one time I did post, I posted a video where I explained this with the homegirls at Nonstop Record on a YouTube video. Yeah. And um, one of her homies saw the video and um, he was like, oh my God, that's my friend. Like, <laughs> And I was like, what? <laughs> so, whoops. That was funny. So she probably knows about it. Because you had a replacement vest for a while, didn't you? Yeah, I had a big puffy one. It just didn't feel the same though. It huh? was cool. I was definitely rocking it. I was rocking it for a second, man. Um, I was wearing those Vans you had gave me, those like um, boat shoes. You're wearing the Vans that ones. I gave you today, right? Oh, wait, now. these are, oh, yeah, huh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Ver- Verbs and I have the same so, size feet. So I have so many intuition heavy towns. We, we have the same size feet. And so back in the day when we were recording a lot together, he'd be at the crib. And I've always had like a fucking shoe fetish for Vans. And it used to be, I used to like really clean Vans. Now I like to let them just get fucked up and wear them till the wheels fall off. But so anytime a pair would start getting fucked up, I'd be like, yo, do you want these? Because I don't need them. And so I don't. Those look cleaner now than when I gave them to you. I don't know how. I just recently washed them. Oh, they, they look, got this oil stain yeah. from my chain. No, those I don't mean, look bad, man. About it. So tell me about your fucking crazy lifestyle right now, because I know sometimes like you just be, yeah, like out in the desert in sweat tents and shit. Yeah, I went to the. Oh man, the sweat tent thing. That was through this website feedbands.com. That was a whole another world of hippie white people I've never met. They paid me to come out there. My little homie Jerry came with me, and he's like this singer guy I met from Pennsylvania. That, I'll get into that later. That's like a whole other realm. Please. Uh, we went up there. I performed. I was like on Molly. I was on shrooms. I was rapping. I had my face painted. I was wearing a dashiki. Uh, I was <laughs> you eating, love painting your face I, I, I was. I, I love that. I don't know, man. <laughs> I was um, eating vegan food and shit. Girls were walking around with titties out. Um, we were there. We were almost supposed to be there for one day. We stayed for four days. Wow. Yeah, we stayed, we Where were, was it? It was in Santa Cruz oh. at this place called the Kale House. Uh-huh. And um, my homie Graham, I mean, it's, it seems like this guy Graham was like having sex with everybody or something. He was like <laughs> the, the cult leader of this shit. Yeah. Some like the skinny dude who had hella tats on his back and a beard, like some like brother, like, you know, like hugging, like, you know. Yeah. And um, yeah, man, it was dope. And then I got into, we did a Native American sweat lodge ritual at the end. Everybody got naked, got in the tent. And we just talked about our feelings and we sang together. And then when we got what out. What kind of hugs were you giving? We all hugged each other. But like, you told me a specific kind of hug. Oh, I, 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 was, I was, the dudes I was hugging like just like the top half. But the ladies I was just giving the full sweaty. Everybody was sweaty. But you told just, me that some girl goes, nah, give me a chakra hug. Oh, the chakra <laughs> hug. Yeah, that's when you got to throw your arm over the shoulder. And it's like, yeah. you know, it's like, you know, you're connected like that. Yeah. But that chakra sh- hug. I use that now. I'm like, nah, girl, give me a chakra <laughs> hug. <laughs> I guess I guess it's something to do with touching the heart chakras together. Yeah, no, nah, but I love when Verbs comes back from a wild adventure because he's always just like, "Yeah, dog, you should have seen the titties." <laughs> <laughs> so many pink areolas, bro. They're everywhere, all he's shapes like, and sizes. Yeah, you love white girl titties, huh? I mean, I love all girl titties, but I see more white girl titties now than I see black girl titties. White girls be down show titties more often. Let's keep it real. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's a cultural difference. I don't know. But Wait, so what was the story you're going to get into about your homeboy, Jerry? Oh, Jerry's from Pennsylvania. And he knows me because I used to collab with this band from Orange County named I Alaska Tough. He knows me from being a fan of them. I meet him through my homie Mikey Wally, who's like a bike rider guy. And he's like, yo, you should meet Jerry. I met Jerry. Jerry knows all these New Jersey rapper cats. And a couple of them came out here and chilled with me and Jerry for a while. And we did a couple songs. And Jerry's trying to do some, like, East Coast, West Coast super group thing. He's trying to be the Rick Rubin of this shit. But, yeah, it's Jersey Clan, my homie Elite, my homie the OGM, his dude named Edie. Uh, and we got a homie from the Bay, Chaz Caliber. But that's, like, the new people I hang out with was, like, he left. Jerry's in New Jersey right now. But Jerry's dope. And, um... That's how I've been doing like this Sprite commercial and like chilling in the studio with like Stunner Man and this dude named Yeti Beats who used to work with like NASA. Tell me about the Sprite commercial. Oh man, I just, um, just from chilling at that spot and recording a bunch, um, they just hit me up to come in and do it and I did it. It was me and this dude named Scotch Davis and he knows like those Just Be Cool guys like, you know, Mizzle and Gavin. He knows those dudes. And um, yeah, we did a song. And I did a song with him and Stunner Man too, randomly. Stunner Man from the pack. Because he'd be chilling random in LA, you know. And yeah, that's a place called Squeaky Clean Studios. A lot of dope people come through. Like Jack Davey comes through there sometime. This lady named Lady Tigra, who used to be in that group, La Trim. George Clinton is randomly in there. Hmm. I seen Snoop Dogg there once. And um, all sorts of just random ass fools just be up in there. Like Fat Lip was there once, just using the computer. Like. Hmm. And um, yeah, my life is so crazy. It's like kind of semi-industry mingling. 
Like, and then it's like bike hippie, bike punk hipster shit. Then I still yeah. do the Lamar Park Art Walk. And then I still go to underground hip hop events. Your life is crazy. And most times nowadays, I don't really understand it as much. I don't have a grasp on what you're doing as much. And yeah, you're hard yeah. to get a hold of. I, yeah. It's like always either through Twitter or Facebook. There's no phone right now. Yeah. But like we actually tried to sit down for a little bit and do like a buzz part two. For some reason, I, I'm very, you and I are like kind of opposite. You're yeah. a fucking super free spirit. And I'm like very anal attentive yeah. you know what i mean i'm like ocd organized and you're like completely just like fucking off the wall do whatever you feel whatever makes you happy at the moment right mm -hmm. yeah and, and like i feel like we were trying to uh we were trying to work it out and the, the beats weren't flowing like they used to for some reason it's really the beats man yeah we just one, need to find that's the thing when, when maybe we were, work with one producer when we were something. making the first one it was so serendipitous because we just stumbled upon six awesome beats yeah. that's really why we had an ep because we had six good beats <laughs> And this time we were trying and I was like, you know what? It, it's just not happening this time like it was last time. And we were trying to rush it. I didn't have a spot to record at like I did last time because the first one we did all in my bedroom. Yeah, and that shit came out tight. Yeah. People and would be shocked that it was in your I, And I just mixed it on a fucking laptop by myself and I had never mixed anything before and I just over compressed the fuck out of everything and that gave us that weird lo-fi sound. But anyways, <laughs> my point is, I guess what I'm getting to is like, the free spiritedness and I don't want to like say disorganization, but a little bit of disorganization. It's mad. Dis it's disorganized, but it like it works sometimes. There's a method to your disorganization, I suppose. It all makes sense one day. Yeah. So like, when is Verbs gonna buckle down and really sit down and write a fucking album? Man, you know, soon I guess. Man, I don't know, dude. I need a bulk sum of money or a real job. So I've been teetering on thinking about getting a real job. But I feel like if I do that, I might miss out on some super dope thing that might propel me to something. I don't even know. Where does that come from? Like, where does the fear that you're going to miss out on something come from? Because you are somebody who has literally at every fucking, I see you anywhere, anytime that I go out, I see you. Because, <laughs> and, I, and I'm not out that much. So, like, yeah, yeah. you're the person who's known to be everywhere. So, like, where does that come from, that need to feel like you're everywhere? Man, when I'm by myself, I get lonely, man. Yeah. Keep it real. I like hanging out with people. Yeah. My brain eats itself when I'm not in social settings. Why? Maybe I need to work that out with myself, but yeah. that's just how it be. And that's why I be like trying to be out all the time. And if I have CDs, I try to sell them. And then, um, I don't know, man. There's nothing to do at my house in Culver City. There's no internet. There's nothing to do. There's an angry mother there who sits in all her hoarderness. Yeah. And I can't I mean, do you I get bummed when raps. you're at the crib or what? Yeah. Why? It, what bums you out? My mom. It's depressing. Like, I can't be there. She's like... I mean, do you feel like you need to, like, reach out and help her or something? Is it past help? I can't even help her. I mean, it's not like she's in a bad situation. I mean, her health ain't the greatest, but I mean, it's like... I mean, you know, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's like... So does that give you a sense of helplessness that makes you want to fucking go out and party? Yeah, I guess. I mean, if I stay there, I'll just sleep all day and, like, jack off, like, eight times. Like, that's not cool. Like, I want to go Sometimes hang out. Sometimes that's <laughs> like, cool. You know? <laughs> like, yeah. I am so cool on that. Yeah. I'd rather go be cuddling with random girls or the girl I like right now and stuff like that. Yeah. What is it going to take to get you... To, I want to see you win and like I know that you're out here winning small battles every day but I want to see you win a big ass battle and I think the way to do that is like sit down and organize everything you know yeah 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 I got some to do lists in a note on my iPad mm -hmm. I was trying to get visuals knocked out for like some, a lot of new songs that I've done and even some old songs even go back and just do a video for some old shit yeah and just start pumping shit on a YouTube channel with a strategy and shit I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm a pawn in a lot of people's chess game I feel and I'm not the master of my own chess explain game. that i feel like you know i have a homie named jerry who's trying to do all this shit he introduced me to those people at that baller studio i feel like i'm just a piece in his chess game and then um in, in the family i feel like i'm like a, a small component of like kind of like hip-hop liaison guy i feel like i'm in that chess game then in this bike scene shit i feel like i'm a token rapper slash token black guy in their like chess game are the black people few and far between in that it's few. There's a bunch of us, though. There's even, like, all black rides, too. But, it, but I mean, anybody can go to the rides, but there's, like, some black crews. But for the most part, the real popping inner circle of the bike scene shit, it's real. It's, um, you know, it's few and far between. But yeah. the people who are in it are pretty, like, dope. It's an open-minded scene. I used to be it's involved mad. as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's how I even you know really know about it is from you. Yeah, so I was going on. Crazy, I was man. going on rides, and right when I was kind of getting out of rides is when you really started going yeah, yeah, hard yeah. at them. You yeah, know, yeah. A lot of those fools I know through like the Ephraim, LA Breakless, yeah, all that George was from and you. Ephraim. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to George and Ephraim. Yeah. We actually threw some shows at LA Breakless back yeah. in the day. Those were hella popping. My party on Sunday was dope too. Yeah, that shit dope. was sick. 
Um, to hear that you feel like a, a pawn in a chess game, how do you take control of that? It'll figure it out. I mean, my life thing, I'm just like, you know what? It's going to work out. And I just have this faith and shit's been working out. Like when I went to San Francisco, I didn't have no way to get home. It shit worked out. Had places to stay. Even people I met, I stayed with them. I got home. When I don't have sound systems for bananas, I just be like, it's going to work out. It works out. I mean, I read the knowledge itself. I believe in 5% knowledge to an extent. And I believe that I believe I can manifest my fucking destiny. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'm reading this new book called How to Hustle and Win Part One. Yeah. And it's like, it's just some like, you know, there's certain things I need to apply to my own life. Like, you know, like um, execution and shit like that. And just put taking the steps to accomplish what you want to do. So I need to start Absolutely. taking Absolutely. I think that steps. you are... Uh, Here's what I will say. One thing about when you and I worked together, you were the amazing starter and I was the finisher. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. On all six of those songs, pretty much, you had either the first bar that like sparked the idea or you had some random kind of like something that like that made us go, oh, wait, that could be what the song is about. Yeah. And then it was like, all right, cool. Well, here's how I would have to step in and structure it. I think I had to teach you how to count bars at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Because you were just like rap until the beat changed. Like, I'm like, whatever. And I'm like, nah, you need a couple more bars. <laughs> until right? I'm done talking. <laughs> yeah. You, and so I want to tell you that I think you are one of the most talented people that I know. And I mean that realistically, like oh, you're thanks, one man. of the best rappers I know for real. Like your bars are always crazy. And and like, yeah, I, I want to see you finish something, and I want you. I want to see you fucking put out yeah, a full man. project. I'm trying and to so, be at the Grammy stunting. Absolutely, <laughs> and I think you could. I think you could. So uh, my thing is like, we haven't really talked that much in the last couple of years. Like you've mm. been running around so much, and like when I see you, I see you. But you know, like we used to get together and talk. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And yeah, so. Yeah. I know I haven't been there that much, but anything you need help with, man, I would love to help manifest your fucking Word. destiny because you are very talented. So, You're looking, uh, man. yeah, most definitely. Uh, anyhow, I think that's gonna Is about, that an hour. That's been an hour. Damn. I'm sorry that I ended it on preaching at you. Don't even trip. Should I get some shout outs? Yeah, shout out whoever. Tell the people where to find you. Yo, verbs.bandcamp.com, enough said ep.bandcamp.com, soundcloud.com backslash verbs is the homie, the vagabondon.tumblr.com, facebook.com backslash verbs is the homie music, myspace.com backslash verbs is the homie music. I just made one. Uh, yeah, I even did some interview for MySpace. Easiest way to find this dude is Twitter at verbs is the, the homie. homie. Homie is H O M I E. And um, shouts out to the family. Shouts out to the Angelopes. Shouts out to Hellfire Club. Shouts out to the swim team. Shouts out to Project Blow, West LA, uh, Committee of the Grizzly, a homie Bless Escrow, Lamert Park, and everybody who supports me, Culver City, all the people who live in that area, my Rista Garden projects. People who live down Slauson. Liquid Comms Clothing. Shouts out to those guys. Those are Culver City Cats. And um, King's Cafe. Shouts out to the homie Omar. If he ever listens to this, I shouted you out. And um, hell yeah. Yeah, man. That, that was the most hip hop thing that's ever happened on my podcast. <laughs> well, that was so out. much, so much shout outs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing. Hey, when you're a motherfucker that's as many places as Verbs is, you got to shout out the whole fucking city. Man. Hey, man. But for real, I wish you the best. You know, I've always loved working with you and I love being around you. You're a great guy. My name is Intuition and uh, you can follow us at That's Kinda Neat on Twitter. Follow my man behind the boards, Ben Shim, database at I am database, base with two S's. Follow me at It's Intuition on Twitter. Check out the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash that's kind of neat for a song that Verbs just did. Everything You Make It by Pistol McFly and me. You did a little bit of karaoke. Yeah, I did Pistol McFly's verse. I hope I did it justice. And then I did my verse. And yeah. Then, yeah. Produced by Listed. Shouts out to Seven Day and Listed. And uh, yeah. Yeah, man. Verbs, thank you so much for coming in. I appreciate it. Hell yeah. My name's Intuition and that was kind of neat. Drink water. Drink water. Drink water.